Alright, I'm Manslave, and this video is going to be for the Validation Warfare YouTube channel, and the, the Disposable Human Doing, he's not here right now, so I'm just making this video on my own. I was checking um, comments on YouTube and all that, and uh, I noticed that with the videos that I've been putting out lately, and the disposable human doing he has not been here for several days and all that um so i've just been making videos on my own and we as a as a duo have been putting out uh, a couple videos in the last uh, week or two and we went from gosh like 37 subscribers to 52 subscribers in just like a week or a week and a half uh, we're getting more views and all that. Um, apparently, we're uh, we're touching on something that is uh, apparently important to some people, and um, and I just gotta make sure my audio. Okay, okay, my audio is good. Um, uh, I just apparently without partnering with YouTube like Dr. Claw has done uh, you know the Femetheist uh, me and DHD we don't take in donations there is no money uh, regarding what we do um, we work jobs for what we want to have we don't take in donations like Dr. Claw the Femetheist and uh, the conspiracy theorist known as Anita Sarkeesian. They both take in don donations. Uh, Anita Sarkeesian that runs the uh, Feminist Frequency uh, YouTube channel and website and all that. She took in 160k, that's $160,000 to finance her Kickstarter project, well well to finance her, her uh, video series called Tropes vs. Women that was this summer of 2012 just you know six or seven eight months ago um and you can see in previous videos she's got a pretty nice looking camera and you see that she's got nice equipment her videos look like they're well made i mean i i, I really get pissed off at her message but i mean on her end of production i mean things look pretty good i mean it just about looks like something good enough to be on tv in terms of money spent on equipment and how to use it and all that so somebody and you know on her end is, is you know knows how to do things and is doing a pretty good job it's just the message I have a problem with but I, I still totally support you know her to be on the web uh, because I mean to prove my point that you know feminist feminists are not trustworthy I mean I need for people like Anita Sarkeesian and uh, Dr. Claw, you know, the Femetheus, to be um, on the web. That's why, regardless of what, um, regardless of what the Femetheus, I mean, Dr. Claw says to me um, on on YouTube, um, I don't block or ban or flag her stuff um, because, as far as I know of, she hasn't flagged any of my stuff yet. And that's cool, you know, I mean, um, I think I would tolerate threats, like death threats, maybe, yeah, um, not that, like, I necessarily need them, because, uh, if you've watched, um, previous video, I've already, uh, faced my death, and, um, you know, so, anyway, um, yeah, um, uh, the, the Femetheus has so much to live for. I mean, she's she's young, obviously. She's still got her looks. There's plenty of more gullible, uh, naive guys out there that she can exploit with her vagina. And, um, you know, all she's got to do is basically, you know, keep her mouth shut about her bigotry. Or, may, matter of fact, she can actually keep on talking about it and, you know, intimidate, uh, you know, like, uh, emotionally intimidate men some more. And they'll, they'll still tolerate it and put up with it. I mean... Yeah, now if they get it now if she finally fully takes the mask off and you know does a false rape allegation which I'm going to get into later or you know if she does a false uh, sexual assault allegation uh, as what was uh, as a you know the the um, the false sexual assault allegation that um, 
that was alleged against uh, the disposable human doing a couple weeks ago, and of course the you know false sexual harassment allegation that was you know uh, that I that I was the victim of uh, during last year of 2011. Um, and you know when a man you know hears those words sexual harassment, you know used in conjunction with something he did especially if he didn't make any advances or anything like that or especially if he was obeying the same standard that the female in the situation had put forth uh, all he's got to do is hear sexual harassment or any allegations of sexual deviancy or you know or just hear somebody say rape you know and implying he did it or whatever uh, I assure you that he wants to put a gun in his mouth and eat a bullet. Um, that time I was talking about beaks and mythology uh, because I was on the topic of Thoth and um, like how mythologies actually function. You know, Thoth from the uh, ancient Egyptian uh, pantheon and all that. Well, a uh, uh, toxic female co-worker who's all into like romance novels and just, you know, the typical poop mouth stuff. Uh, has a bunch of tattoos and piercings and, you know, is just not worth any guy's time. Um, she was joking around, because you can tell by the tone of her voice, which still makes it even worse that she was joking around. And she says, Beak, what's that? That sounds like something sexual. That's sexual harassment. I wonder what the district manager would think about that. And I felt like I got struck by lightning. And, I don't know. I was stunned for like maybe 10 or so seconds and then I just I I just blew up in in fury on her uh shouting obscenities for at least 20 minutes I think uh, cussing and griping about how women sexualize like so many things that aren't even sexual in nature and I said, you know, why do you people got to make everything so goddamn fucking sexual all the time? Um, it just, like, and it, 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 it ruined the rest of my evening. And I went to bed early because I was so depressed. And I felt like shit for the following week. Um, all through that night and the fall and on up to the following week, um, she still uh, continued to flirt with me uh, days after this had happened. And she say, how's my cupcake? Oh, cupcake. And I said, and I got pissed. And I said, I'm not your cupcake. She's like, ooh. And uh, then later on, like the next day, the very next day, she didn't learn her lesson. You know, because apparently to women, no doesn't mean no when it's used toward their direction. Um... You know, because they're fed all this bullshit that, you know, that, that men don't understand what no means. Um, because feminism actually sets women up for failure. Uh, it, sets them, it sets them up to not be taken seriously and not to be respected. Uh, but, you know, feminists haven't learned their lesson because actually they're terrorists. You know, I, I got this pamphlet from the library, the public library downtown. And a couple of things uh, that it mentions... At, uh, you know what terrorists do one is that uh, terrorists um, seek to disrupt daily life well yeah feminists do all that and they're fucking like protests and all their all their shit they try to push through uh, legislation and all the fear mongering they do and then um, uh, they, they, they and what they do is actually the pamphlet says that terrorists seek to um, create a climate of panic and fear Let's see well no it's not all right let's see if i can oh pamphlets. I need to get Oh gosh. Homeland Security.
Okay, it sort of looks like this, but and these ones, and they get different ones, like what to do in a biological attack, what you know. Um, So anyway, uh, I'm going to have to do another video just on that topic. But, um, yeah, um, th there's two things pertinent in that uh, Homeland Security pamphlet that reminds me of what feminists do. Uh, it's not unique only to feminists. Uh, it's just very, very general and broad. And feminists actually fit in that, that, uh, that category. Um, you know, it's actually supposedly supposed to be speaking about Al Qaeda or whatever. Um, you know, creating. You know, the, the goals of terrorism are to to create a um, atmosphere of panic and fear. But that's what the feminists do. Their slut walks and then all their brawl burning in the '70s and all this little shit. You know, stuff they did to Aaron Pitsy. You know, uh, Aaron Aaron, uh, Aaron Pitsy was a woman who ran uh, domestic violence shelters. Uh, taking in victims of domestic violence, and because some of the uh, people she, some of the victims she took in uh, into the shelter happened to be men, uh, feminist uh, bigots uh, back in the 60s and 70s were very outraged, and I saw that. Um, Um, yeah, so, um, what they did is this shaming tactic right here. Uh, yeah, Aaron Pitsy condones vi uh, male violence. Um, and I wonder who that bigot is right there. Um, oh gosh, who, who was that? Um... They look, that person looks familiar right there. Oh. Looking. Looking. Oh. Oh, where is it? I'm looking for a name. Um, I just wonder if that's uh, a Famethius mom. I wonder if that's her mom, uh, Valerie Solanas. Um, yeah, this is an interesting article. All right, all right. Um, yeah, so a lot of feminists, especially the rad fems like um, like um, Doctor Claw, which most people know her to be the um, the Femetheist. Um, I mean. Like, in the Scum Manifesto, Society for Cutting Up Men, um, Valerie Solanas was very, very critical of men, uh, the male gender. I remember uh, a few lines in her book, in particularly where she says, A man will wade through a river of vomit up to his nostrils, or nostril-deep vomit. Um... To get across 
if, you know, if he thinks that there is some pussy waiting for him on the other side. Well, this goes into the male quest for validation and all that. And it's and because men seek, well, men are expect. Well, actually, society is taught that men are validated, um, that their existence is only valid through, through um, their interactions with women. Um, that's part of why I chose the name Manslave. Uh, and I use this old picture of a um, of a slave running away from the plantation, and he's a black man. He's uh, from Africa, and I I use this as a symbolic icon. Did I just find something? Oh, I did. Oh, what did I just find? Oh, there's that eight gig SD card. Oh, I was just glancing at my desk. I saw uh, this little thing, and it's like that's that, that's the SD card I've been searching for all year long. So now I got two eight gig SD cards. All right, good. Now I don't have to buy another one. So anyway, um, yeah, I've just really been searching for that SD card for a while. I end up buying a sixteen gig just to replace that eight, and. Um, now I can take uh, probably all of those issues of Nintendo Power um, and uh, convert them over to EPUB format for my e-reader and fit all of the Nintendo Power magazines from the you know late 1980s and early 1990s. Fit them all on uh, that 8 gig SD card and um, put them on um, put them on my e-reader. Um, it's like what is it is it like I think it's like a was it like a gig per year or something like that or or is it anyway uh you know for like 12 issues is like a gig or something like that of space so anyway um yeah and this this picture here is very symbolic of what I'm trying to teach um and so anyway um all right now um refresh this just in case uh, i got a few extra subscribers or views oh yeah <laughs> i have some more comments with uh dr claw of Prometheus. um so anyway um I uh, talked to uh, the Disposable Human Doing a few uh, days ago, and uh, I let him watch parts of this video right here, Feminism and Its Sociopathic Behavior. He thought it was pretty good. It's especially good past the two-hour mark, because uh, I get into a bunch of examples. He says we're probably going to have to make a series about that, and I agree. You know, just take a music video and spend about 20 minutes or half an hour analyzing it, and... and uh, and uh, you know, give some commentary. And uh, now, see, me and the disposable human doing for for years, ever since we were kids, we were taught to treat women properly. And this set us up for failure because what it did is, it did not prepare us for our encounters with today's woman. Um, and what we had done is. Uh, What we did was, we we were simply acting upon our our upbringing, our teaching, and we inadvertently treated women too good. And the uh, well, um, the disposable human doing his former girlfriend used him as a stepping stone, and just like a, a true sociopath or somebody with antisocial personality disorder, um, his former girlfriend was one of those people that can easily establish a relationship but cannot maintain one. The limit of her relationship duration is only eight months. I think nine months in uh, in profound cases, but it's typically an average of eight months. Um, that's the longest that she can endure a relationship. She either gets tired of the guy or whatever. 
um, now with the guy whom she broke up with this year that she left the disposable human doing for last year I have not heard anything of, uh, regarding you know him mistreating her um, I'm sure I would have heard about that actually this stuff travels with the grapevine quite a bit um, he probably treated her pretty good um, but she I, I don't know what she would tell that guy about you know the disposable human doing and all that and the reason for why she left him or whatever but uh, my former girlfriend or as I refer to her my former owner because she used to tell me that she owns me and it, in, in particular that she owns certain parts of my anatomy um anyway um she um it's it's been almost a year since I kicked her out of my apartment and in that duration she's had two boyfriends that I, that I that I know about one of them is uh, a wrestler uh, a wrestler um who I think is supposedly my age and she used to talk about how dreamy he was and how great he was this was like back during last summer and all that when she was, you know, getting flirting responses from him and, and showing me, you know, how during the month of September, I believe it was the month of September, or was it October, um, that, you know, these, these, uh, was it four different guys were all flirting with her, um, or was it five? Okay, it was uh, it was three on the internet, and maybe two um, in person. Um, she would tell me about how one of her former boyfriends, who works at a grocery store around here, would slap her on the butt, and you know she didn't claim sexual harassment on that one. Um, no, she would just tell me about it and expect me uh, to get all pissed off. Oh, God damn this thing. Plastic expanded. She expected me to get all pissed off and I guess want to punch the dude's face in or whatever. And it's just, I just didn't feel like it. And um, that's part of the problem she had with me is because I wouldn't defend her honor. Well, I was raised that violence was wrong. So, you know, that, that's, once again, mm. women aren't happy with guys because a lot of guys are behaving the way women say they want a guy to behave but yet women aren't satisfied with them um, anyway that's a whole other topic um, I didn't want this recording to be very long so this 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 video is a video response to uh, Dr. Kalal uh, of whom most people know as the Femetheist, and where she had some comments uh, that she um, had left me. No, oh, I got two responses just then, just since then. Um, wow, I just stumbled upon your comments is what I just now did. Um, I'm going to like what this guy says. Um, I'm going to like it. Uh, Like says uh, amazing thanks for all your work uh, I just stumbled upon your channel the other day and I said I'm glad you like it um, 
This channel is dedicated to men who don't want to be victimized anymore by women. Onward toward real equality of treatment between the genders. All right, that little hint for uh, that person there. Let's see. Um, really aren't. Really? Are, are you serious? Like. The true Puka, I've heard that name before. Girl writes, well, I don't know who that person is. Alright, I'll have to check that out later. Look at my subscriptions. Alright. Oh, wow, look at this. A woman raped a boy. Hmm. Okay, so, and it looks like this is a mugshot, so she uh, got arrested for it or whatever. Now, so a woman raped a boy. Uh, is this going to change uh, the perception of, uh, of that society has uh, between the genders? I mean, can we now uh, distrust a woman to sit next to an unaccompanied boy on a plane? I mean, can, can we, you know, can we... Can we treat women uh, the same way that we treat men, which is to have a, a just a, a systematic distrust for them uh, in regards to um, uh, access to children and uh, and interactions with children? Hmm? Can, can can we start having a level playing field? Can we start having some equality of treatment? Um. Yeah, I can't resist this. A 32-year-old Pekin woman is being held in the Tazewell County Jail tonight, charged with having a sexual relationship with a teenage boy. Maria Bialetto was charged with aggravated criminal sexual assault of a victim between the ages of 13 to 17. She was ordered held on 25... A woman who is my age, 32 years old, is having sexual relations with a male that is... with, with a, a male that is half her age... I mean, now, if women are somehow the uh, the moral uh, authority in society, as women portray themselves to be, uh, you know, how they, they uh, you know, you see in advertisements all the time, you know, that a male will screw up in the kitchen or he can't change diapers very well at all. Of course, I change diapers just fine. Um, and... Um, yeah, I change all my kids' diapers. Um, and so anyway, um, matter of fact, I was given the responsibility of changing the first diaper. Um, and uh, many subsequent diapers after that. Um, th there's, there's a lot of duties I do uh, in regards to taking care of my kid. Uh, who's only a year and a half old right now and um, anyway uh, oh yeah in addition to paying for um, for uh, a meal ticket for my uh, uh, former uh, sexual assaulter um, and that's what it is I mean you know I mean, we always hear about how women you know are unable to give consent um, to sexual uh, activity uh, while they're under the influence of alcohol. Well, I happen to remember that I had this routine uh, back in like what October of um, no September, October, and into November of uh, 2011, where I like to to relax when I get off of work um, from a frustrating job, and I like to come home and get drunk and and do my drunk driving on the couch. Um, playing Super Mario Kart, the original Super Mario Kart on Super Nintendo, not Nintendo 64, not GameCube, not in 3D. Anyway, um, I, uh, I like to play that and a few other games. 
um, it was just fascinating. I, I I thought it was appealing. Here it was I was <laughs> I was drunk, pretty damn drunk, on uh, rum and whiskey, and sometimes Jägermeister without Red Bull, just drinking Jägermeister straight from the bottle. Uh, and it just it was fun to to play Mario Kart, and I got fairly good at it. Um. Uh, when I was drunk and it was just appealing it's like yeah I'm driving a vehicle <laughs> and I'm drunk but I'm sitting on my couch and it's not a real vehicle it's a video game so therefore I have no consequences I have no guilt um, you know I can I can satisfy my urges to operate a motor vehicle while not endangering anybody because I'm sitting on my couch driving a vehicle in a video game so anyway I enjoyed doing that and playing some games because they, they were just kind of different when you're drunk you know it was a different experience and uh, well you know my uh, former um, former owner former girlfriend um, uh, was in the mood to have sex and I wasn't because uh, whenever I'm drunk I get motion sickness and it just kills the whole mood and just make sex uh, an unpleasant thing. Um, no, I actually enjoyed uh, listening to music and uh, ironically I'd dance whenever I'd uh, get drunk, which I normally never do, dance, um, and uh, play video game stuff. So anyway, uh, she took me back to the back bedroom and uh, found a way to get herself pregnant and uh, assured me that, um, you know, that nothing bad was gonna happen or anything like that and of course I was drunk um, and um, yep and so uh, yeah that's how she got a uh, second kid without my consent uh, because I originally did not have plans to be a father and really didn't necessarily want to be a father um, Oh, uh, so anyway, um, and fatherhood was forced upon me, and everybody expected me to just man up and deal with it, um, and that sort of thing, um, and you see the example set forth by feminists, you know, where they say that, um, that you know well uh, the original definition from when I was a kid of, uh, of, of rape is you know um, when somebody forces you know um, forces you into sexual uh, actions without your consent um, well of course you know I've always heard about how um, since I was a teenager uh, you always hear about these things, you know, um, oh, um, as a, as a defense for, for, uh, abortion and keeping it legal, you always hear, well, you know, what if a woman's raped and she don't want to keep the child, you know, what if she's sexually assaulted or whatever, and, um, you know, she doesn't want motherhood forced upon her, uh, you know, and society regards forcing motherhood upon a woman without her consent to be a form of, of violation, and they, they regard it as a, a form of sexual assault. Well, fatherhood was forced upon me twice uh, without my consent. Um, how would you like to be led on during the whole pregnancy uh, thinking that it was an accident? Um, you know, because she assured you that, you know, she was incapable of getting pregnant and all that, and, uh, Anyway, um, um, so how would you like to be led on thinking that the pregnancy was an accident? And then about three months after the baby's born, you're told by her, she says, he was planned. And she says in that tone, tone of voice, like, oh, he was planned. And then she expects you to get all flattered from it. And, I mean, and you find out that you were made a sperm donor against your will. This happened to me. Okay, and it happened to some other guys I know of, but it especially happened to me. Um, 
and I hear so many stories of it happening to other men, and of course I know it's possible because it happened to me. Uh, you know, manslave, that's who I am. Uh, so anyway, um, you know, and when people bring up this, this topic, they, they say, well, you should be glad she chose you as a father and, and, and that she, you know, and decided to have a kid with you because cause it means that you're, you're a good enough father and all this other kind of stuff. And they say all kind of other things along that, that uh, train of logic. Um, or that, that train of thought, that, that variety of logic, and then to which I respond, I say, oh, okay, well, let's use the same logic here uh, in a different type of scenario. Okay, so uh, if a man, so this is just, you know, just a hypothetical what if, you know, what if, okay, what if uh, a man um, um, rapes a woman uh, should she be flattered? Should she be glad that she was, that, that, you know, that somebody thought that she was attractive enough for sexual relations? I mean, can we just be a society that doesn't sexually victimize people? Can, can we please be like that? Uh, and Dr. Claw, uh, the Femetheist, uh, labels me as, well, you know, she asked the question, well, maybe you're one of them rape enablers, one of them rape supporters. Uh, no, I'm not. I do not condone rape. I have not condoned rape at any time. Neither has the disposable human doing. No, actually what it is, me and the disposable human doing, we detest rape. Uh, it's a very horrible, unthinkable thing. Uh, most men do not have the urge to do anything like that. Um... Uh, they just, anyway, um, no, uh, see, me and the disposable human doing, and especially me, manslave, would love to exterminate rape and eradicate sexual harassment. I've stated it before. All we gotta do is educate men about female nature, inherent female psychological composition. And when more girl power causes more women to get tattoos, which are an eyesore, and to bake themselves in the uh, in the tanning beds and result in football skin that looks nasty, and you know rot their teeth and and just all that with nasty cigarette smoke, um, and oh gosh, what else? Um, and turn themselves into a fishing lure with a bunch of piercings. When a bunch more of that stuff happens, um, hopefully men will wake up even more. Uh, men are encouraged to lower their standards. I used to hear it whenever I was a teenager. You know, it's like people would say, well, if you want to find love, maybe you should lower your standards. You know, it's like, well... Well, maybe you're just setting your standards too high. Maybe maybe you're going after the supermodels and maybe, you know, because you didn't get a supermodel, maybe that's why you're you're depressed. And I'm thinking, no, that's not exactly the, the situation. Um Because in the past, yeah, there have been some girls who I was uh, attracted to that many other people would be attracted to, but like Honestly, there's a lot of girls that I find some attraction to um, that not everybody else thinks are attractive. Uh, I mean, I kind of, well, I felt like I had a monopoly on a certain type of woman um, in terms of being, you know, like me being the only person that's attracted to this type, this physical type and all that. I found out a few other guys are that same way, and secretly a lot of other guys are like that too. Um, but you know, so many guys, you know, in order to obtain social approval and to, um, and to keep from being, um, um, shamed or, or bullied or teased, you know, they, they, what they'll end up doing is saying that they're attracted to only thin women and all that, uh, like Barbies. And... Anyway, 
say, you know, women, they, they act like they're such victims of society's desires and all that, you know, to be thin and pretty and all that. Well, men are victimized in a similar way to be protector providers, to be macho, uh, and all this other stuff. Uh, men are encouraged to be that way, and if, and if you're a guy who's not that way, then a lot of times you're labeled as a fag. Uh, I'm not gay bashing. I don't feel like gay bashing is something that's appealing. Um, I have a bit of sympathy for, uh, I have some sympathy for gay men because in a way they are actually victims of women. Um, I do not have the same sympathy toward lesbian women since um, lesbian women uh, never can be satisfied with anything. Actually, I mean the disposable human doing. Um, well, I, I just know of this person. Now, the disposable human doing has actually worked with this person I'm about to mention, but she was a manager at a restaurant he worked at, and uh, who was a openly confessed lesbian, uh, and she looked the part. Uh, she looked, you know, butch and all that. Um, and he he remembers during this time they worked there that this lesbian was bitching about women and just how unbearable they are and how she's fed up with women and how she wants to actually become straight <laughs> oh yeah we've talked about that before so anyway I, I gotta continue on with this uh, video response to uh, to uh, Dr. Claw also known as the Femetheist uh, I gotta finish this here thousand dollar bond and remains in the Tazewell County Jail Bialetto had been in court last Friday for a hearing on a paternity test, after which an order of protection against Bialetto was issued. She was arrested on Sunday. Think if you're being held against your will. <laughs> What's going on? All right, you just blink when you said that, so I'm kind of confused. Are you in danger? We're looking for Chris Watson. That's me. What? You know you're on a website as a sex offender? Yes, I, I registered because I just moved here. I, I was going to go house to house and talk to you all personally, but since you were nice enough to form a mob and come visit me, I guess now is as good a time as any. It was five years ago, and I made a huge mistake with a 15-year-old boy that I will regret for the rest of my life. I served my time in prison, and I'm still dealing with things in therapy. Welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> exactly. Men are kept in such a state of a certain state of mind by the intimidation that is done by women. Um. because women do it to men okay and I don't need to hear any Nawalt uh, deflections okay because for um for more than a decade I've been saying that not all men are like that you know not all men are assholes or jerks or pigs or abusers or whatever and uh, you know it fell on deaf ears um you know, people tell me that I just didn't understand and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, any of you apologists out there apologizing for women's behavior and all that and justifying what they do, you can go fuck yourself. Um, because, um, hopefully before long you won't be fucking men. Okay? And you can just go fucking suck it up and deal with it. Now it's time for you to hear me roar. Because I've been listening to you women roar for most of my lifetime. Um, I've had to tolerate your shit for more than half my lifetime. Um, so you can just deal with it. Um, 
And for you guys out there, my message to you is get off the drug. You need to end your addiction to pussy. It's not worth all the sacrifice and effort. It's not worth all of your struggle that you go through in order to obtain it. And you see this video here. I mean, there, there's a, a certain consensus in society. Whenever a sex offender is male, their, their response is, Well, that filthy bastard, he doesn't deserve to breathe the same air that we breathe. Mm. See these responses when a, um, when a sex offender is a woman, it either doesn't really get revealed publicly, or its exposure to the public is very limited, or people think it's just an isolated case, um, and that's why it doesn't affect public policy. I mean, this is the day and age where, you know, a woman can sit next to an unaccompanied child on a bus or plane, and it's not regarded as anything for concern. And yet people get suspicious whenever a man sits next to an unaccompanied uh, child in the same circumstance. Uh, you know, the whole Michael Jackson debate and that sort of thing. Um, and so anyway... Um, <clears throat> so then, um, what else? Oh yeah, and then, you know, men are in a, actually they're victims in a form of psychological abuse. Women, what they do is they, they overvalue their vaginas, uh, kind of like how a market thing is. Uh, a lot of times they'll limit a man's access to vagina and make him sacrifice or run a gauntlet metaphorically or extend himself in terms of his, you know, or, or expend himself. Uh, I actually know somebody, uh, my former girlfriend's mom, and from, you know, I mean, there's this guy who she let shack up with her because, you know, well, he ended up paying her bills and all that. Oh, making the house payment, paying the electric, paying for gas, paying the rent, there's all this other stuff. Uh, anything the food stamps won't pay for. And then, uh, you know, when he moved in and started paying for stuff, she quit her job and took a vacation that lasted for like a year or maybe even longer. Hmm. Maybe almost two years. So anyway... And she's not attracted to this guy, and nobody really is. He's kind of hideous looking, actually, and his personality is not all that great, and he's just really annoying. And um, supposedly has a criminal record. Well, one time uh, we were all in the, you know, in the, um, at the Justice Center, and uh, where there's a courthouse, um, where this woman was, you know, trying to get her ex-husband locked up for a long long time and then that failed and um because not enough evidence is brought forth and um and of course there was recanted stories and then uh the uh the prosecutor said uh well, well now it's or what is it, sorry. well it's common for women to recant their stories because they're intimidated by, by men and, and, and well and they do this to, to kind of protect themselves you know from, from the man and, could, and, and then men are described in that situation I've sat there in the courtroom and listened to all this misandric shit so you know you can't tell me that it don't exist this is back in the spring of, uh, of uh, 2010 um you know and uh yeah and so, I, yeah, I do know it exists. And um, so anyway, um, anyway, so we were in there, and then this one dude, this this hideous dude that I'm talking about, you know, the the, the mom's uh, new boyfriend or whatever. Yeah, he's he. I guess he just figured he'd you know check up on himself and get a printout of his criminal history, uh, which was a couple pages long. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, while we're here, you know, since it's free. I'll get a printout on my uh, criminal record too, or a background check. 
and uh, it was only one page, and it turns up with zero, uh, well, you know, zero items found, and all that. It's just a brief one-page thing that basically says I'm clean, and uh, I still got that. Um, um, and this is from like 2010, yeah, and I uh, still haven't got any uh, any violations. You know, I've never been uh, never been uh, arrested. I've never been charged. I've never been tried. I've never been convicted of anything. <clears throat> so uh, my criminal record is still very very clean, or my my history. Uh, you know, I have no criminal record. My my criminal history is very clean. Um, so, um, this guy wasn't very clean, and so anyway, but apparently clean enough to hold a job, uh, so anyway, this dude moved in, and she's not attracted to him, and he is pretty hideous, and smokes like a chimney, smokes a lot of cigarettes, his teeth are all fucked up, and I don't think he does very much effort on hygiene, and all that, um, and... So anyway, she lets him shack, or lets yeah him impose and shack up with her and all that, and well, he's paying the bills and paying all of her expenses and all that. So you know, no, she's not gonna kick him out. And she, this this has been going on for more than a year, and from what I heard, <laughs> uh, she does not give him any access to her vagina. I mean, like they're living in the house together. It was the house was in her name, but the dude paid the bills and all that because at first she was paying the bills by going to you know to using these payday or using these uh, uh, paycheck advance services and all that living off of that um, so um, yeah so he's paying for practically everything and you know and she doesn't get freaky with him, <laughs> as you say. She doesn't give him any sex as a reward. She tells pe she acts like she's the victim, and that she acts like he's like really horrible, and also like kind of tells all kind of other stories. And yet she won't leave him. She won't leave him because, of course, she needs him for his utility of you know maintaining a household for her, and uh, just all kind of other stupid shit. I mean, like every guy she gets with, she labels as like some asshole that she has reason to be afraid of and all that turns down all these nice guys and all that uh guys that offer to give her a taste of the good life and all this other kind of stuff and <laughs> anyway uh yeah and dr claw you know Phometheist, uh, you need to take some responsibility for your gender or your gender needs to take some responsibility i mean they get okay okay and this is what i'm going to say to the Phometheist. okay if if men are assholes then why does your gender keep getting with them I mean, why does your gender keep rewarding their behavior? I mean, like, really, you gotta take some responsibility here. I mean, come on. I mean, you're not a dumb fuck, are you? Um, I mean, women aren't just feeble and weak and pathetic and all that, like feminism secretly implies, are they? I mean, like, you know, like, okay, you, you, Phimetheus, would would probably tout yourself as being a very uh, reasonable person and who has a correct worldview, especially about gender relations. And yet you fall into this same trap because of how pathetic you are. I mean, you've told me in your comment, um, you've told me in, um, Gosh, what was it? Um, yeah, find that comment again. Oh. No, I don't need You're it. You're doing a great job, but you're not using all your assets. With a body like that, you can go crazy. Yeah, I've actually had to see this public service announcement. This is the one that I saw when I was a kid, right around the time I started puberty in the early 1990s, and it just, it, it just, Fuck me up in the head. See, I didn't even understand what that guy was saying back then. But, um.
But I heard that phrase, sexual harassment. I've seen, you know, their body language and all that. Um, so anyway, another thing is, I mean, who, who does this shit, really? I mean, come on. They act like, you know, feminists act like this type of behavior that goes on in this public service announcement, they act like it's so fucking prevalent to the point that, like, for some reason a public service announcement supposedly has to be made you know that supposedly so many guys are coming out of the woodwork to behave like this guy here to the point that like this public service announcement is uh, is justified in being on the on on television and it used to interrupt my cartoons when I get off the bus in the evening watching uh, cartoons and all that so uh, yeah I know about this kind of stuff here I mean, who, who does this shit? I mean, really. I mean, I'm not saying that it's never happened, but what I'm saying is that it is so rare, and especially rare to the point that it does not justify the existence of this uh, of this public service announcement. Here, let's check out this other one, too. Yeah. Maybe it's time that when a man's not interested in a woman's advances, maybe he should file some lawsuits also. Get some real equality. But no, he's he's fucking bullied, you know, from the time he reaches puberty onward, you know, that like if you turn he's bullied into 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 being portrayed as less than a man if he happens to turn down a girl. Now, now look at how it's, look at how this is portrayed. Only one woman, and all the guys around the table are all laughing at this joke that doesn't even really make a whole lot of sense. And you know, and no, not all men would be laughing at that. You know what I'm saying? And then th this is such biased, like it, like unrealistic shit that is portrayed in this in this sexual harassment public service announcement and this stuff gets advertised on television you know and that's the thing and it gets advertised in a television programming block that kids see on television therefore children will see this and I saw it when I was a kid, and it it made me uneasy, and it's just one of the things that I mean. Okay, a friend was you know, and and me got into it on uh, on Facebook a while back. Uh, you know, and he said that I shouldn't. Basically, he was he was saying that I should cater to women's or to females' emotional needs, and that I shouldn't like just disregard girls or just ignore. He said that I shouldn't ignore them or make them feel insignificant or whatever, and that sort of thing. I'm gonna have to pull up his comments again and see exactly what he said. I'm just paraphrasing because uh, it's been months since I'd seen that. Now almost. I almost responded back, and it's like, like, where is it written that I have to cater to, like, every, like, microcosmic desire that women have to, like, and why, why, why is it my responsibility to maintain their self-esteem level when so many other woman, uh, women and girls have bullied me in one, one form or another from all the times that they would call me up and pretend like they were interested in me and lead me on and all that because of how gullible I used to be when I was a teenager. Um, or how about all the times I've been flirted with and then whenever I become interested in the girl, she, she says she, she just wants to be friends or she makes up an excuse to justify her irresponsible and unnecessary flirty behavior. Um... Or then when I try to, you know, and even after the persistent flirting, whenever I try to pursue her for a relationship, she acts like she has reasons to be afraid of me or whatever. When she spent more than a month flirting with me um, on a very frequent basis, 
And that's the thing that happened to the disposable human doing a couple weeks ago is, um, you know, that girl was just basically like being how a lot of girls are and, you know, uh, seeking a self esteem boost. And so she, well, she shouldn't be touching his body parts, especially with certain body parts of hers. Um, while he's under the influence of alcohol. Hey, but guess what? You know, the moral authority in society, which in this case was a female, uh, failed to, you know, live up to what, you know, uh, uh, and failed to give a proper example of what was supposed to be done in that situation. Anyway, yeah. So, like, then when he makes an advance on her, after she flirted with him, oh, then she she labels him as a, a sexual deviant who sexually exploited her or, or sexually assaulted her or whatever. I've seen this shit happen way too many times. And the Prometheus, you need to address this issue, okay? Um, I'll go on with this. Now, especially when I was a kid, I did not understand that joke that was being said because I really couldn't hear it all that well. You know, just like, I'm a woman in your business. And like, you know, I was like 10 or 11 years old. What does that mean? You know what I'm saying? What does that, what did this guy's joke even mean? I mean, like, even people that were older wouldn't necessarily understand what this guy was saying. That phrase right there, sexual harassment, and then the look on the guy's face, exactly. That is burned into my mind ever since I began puberty. And there was the Mindy McCready, uh, the Mindy McCready um, music videos of, um, um, uh, he, he says that he wants to dance, but that's not as far as he wants to go. Um, it'll take, um, 10,000 angels to help me, uh, tell them no. Alright. Alright, maybe it was this comment. Okay, yeah, the Fometheus right here, Dr. Claw, says, As for the whole nice guy jerk scenario, it stems from the fact that most guys start out as being a nice guy and become a jerk later. Keep my, okay, yeah, and, um, mm, Ah, oh, oh, here it is. You just indulged in victim blaming. Like, like, like why? Yeah. Hmm. So when I say that the reason why the guy uh, behaves undesirably toward the woman might be in the event that she has a toxic or shitty personality uh, personality and doesn't treat him right. I've witnessed that from personal experience and I've seen it happen to other guys too. Yeah, it's um yeah. It, it's it's and that's why I said what I did. Um and uh and then oh she she accused me of blaming the victim. Um in, in the video you were implying it is unfair to nice guys that girls date jerks instead and then complain about it. Yeah, I, I've, I've been complaining about that for years. Uh, that actually began to tumble me and the disposable human doing down the rabbit hole. Uh, that and um, and a few other things that I mentioned. Uh, oh, uh, once again, she blames men. If the guy's a jerk who starts out as being a nice guy later and then reverts to his true nature, how's that the fault of the girl? I, my, my former girlfriend used to say that shit to me, and I used to hear other girls say it too, you know, and other women saying, they used to say, well, men are assholes, and they just pretend that they're a nice guy temporarily so they can lead you on and, and make you think that you can trust them. But, but then after a little while, after a couple months, then they show who they really are, which is an asshole, man. Yeah, uh, they, they do that. And, uh, you know, I've had here for, let's see, how many years, you know? 
So, uh, bitch, you can just fucking deal with it, all right? All right, um, okay, and it is the fault of the girl, okay? Uh, because, you know, okay, it's like on November 8th of this year, 2012. Um, there was a fight that happened outside of my apartment, uh, in my yard, and, like, I was talking to my friend, uh, actually I was talking to the disposable human doing on the phone, and after I just got home and I was wanting to watch a movie after I talked to him on the phone and all that, well, that got interrupted by a fight that broke out, and, um, commotion down the stairs and all that, and then around my apartment and, um, out my front yard, and I started recording right as they, they had stopped fighting and were running down the hill,